Hallelujah. Open your Bible this morning. I don't know. Pick a scripture. They're all good. <laughs> Someone says, y'all just, just too happy, too joyful. Well, what's your problem? <laughs> uh, I want to share some things with you. I believe it's the right now word. The first this year, the Lord said to me some things about turning things about. Turning things around. Do you understand we're made in the image of God? And no weapon, no demon, no devil, no situation can stop us. In the perfect will of God, we're unstoppable. Huh? Come on, somebody. Uh, I'm a cross between uh, Clint Eastwood, uh, Oral Roberts, and Barney Fife. But uh, I, I cut my teeth uh, preaching revivals in huge gospel tents across America. And, uh, you know, uh, oftentimes people are looking for the magical and the mystical huh, and the fluff. The world is very loud. Huh? The world is loud and videos flashing, strobe lights, you know, and everything. But God oftentimes is a still, small voice. Huh? Uh, oftentimes he gives us a word of knowledge, not a paragraph. Y'all don't get out much, do you? And uh, <laughs> so we don't want to miss the supernatural looking for the spectacular. Hollywood is spectacular. Come on, somebody. There's no, there's no movie stars in the church. There's only one bright morning star. He is, come on, somebody. He is the champion of my salvation. He's the author, the finisher of my faith. He's my getting up, my going to bed. He's my bread when I'm hungry, my water when I'm thirsty. Somebody better say amen. I'm about to blow up. Amen. He's my champion. He's my Lord. Amen. Amen. Without him, I would not be alive. I want to share some things today uh, about turning things around. There's not one word that God ever spoke that is not going to come to pass or has come to pass. God always gets what he speaks. You know you should too? This means work with me or I'll preach at 2 o'clock and the other churches will lead us to the restaurant. In James chapter 3, would you look here with me, please? It talks about turning about, turning about. Now, uh, years ago, uh, back when I had dark hair, and I was a little better looking, um, I, I bought my first big gospel tent, and I, I had it in a little town called Russellville, Kentucky. That's where Jesse James robbed his first bank. Jesse James the outlaw robbed his first bank in Russellville, Kentucky. So I just figured if he could get a start there, so could I. So I put my tent up, you know. I, I, I own a, a large tent from, from uh, Florida. And I go all over town, you know, and I do my advertising, you know, and put up flyers and whatever. Well, it come today to start the tent revival and no tent. So I run over to Nashville, Tennessee, and I, I got a little mini tent. That's all they had. And so I worked all day for the tent. If you know, here it comes, 7.30, I'm getting ready to preach. You know, before I preach, I'll go up over the hill there to Kentucky Fried Chicken, get me a drink of water, you know. And I look down there, that little mini tent, it looked like somebody had dropped a, ha a handkerchief in the cow pasture. <laughs> Man of faith and power of the hour, preaching under a handkerchief. Well, you know, it's 7.30, it's time to start my service. I step out of, the, out of my, my travel trailer, and uh, there wasn't nobody there. So I made my wife, my two kids, and my mama come. <laughs> I heard the Lord say, preach like the house is on fire. So I went out, I began to preach, you know, here, here, here staggered in one drunk. Something about tents uh, dr attract drunks. You know, uh, grasshoppers and, and uh, chiggers and ticks and drunks. <laughs> but anyhow, I, uh, I gave off the call. He, never, he didn't come, but he went all over town and said, come see a man, told me everything I've ever done. You know, we had one of the greatest revivals there. My big tent came in, we put it up. I didn't have a PA system. I had a little guitar box about this size. You ever seen a little big guitar box? Well, I was so pleased with it, I hid it on the pulpit so nobody could see it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, was, uh, we didn't have all the equipment, you know, we have today. And so my, my cord wasn't very long. And, and, and boy, I got to preach it and say, I'm, I'm part Pentecostal. I got that Pentecostal crank. <laughs> I think I'll preach over here a while. And uh, so, so anyway, I'm preaching. And I got all excited. I preached about holy ground. So I kicked off my shoes, you know. I'm out there. But my, 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 my cord wouldn't reach very long, so I just laid the microphone down, you know. I'm out there. I got my socks where it had rained that day. Well, you know, I got carried away. And directly, you know, I used to pick up my microphone, and I located the power. Well, uh -huh. <laughs> well, as cool as I am, I just laid it back down. 
went ahead and preached, you know, and then I, I forgot, and I gave an altar call. Well, he come a man, bless his heart, and you know, about half bald-headed, had perspiration on his brow. He came up for prayer. And I reached over, you know, I'm not grounded. He is. Uh-huh. I laid hands on him and whoo, whoo, whoo. To this day, he thinks I'm the most anointed prophet that ever came to town. To this day. I said to myself, I said, Self, we're going to get us a battery. We're going to shock the folks. The Lord said, the Lord said, you don't need a battery. That's the reason I baptize you in the Holy Ghost and power. Holy Ghost and power. Holy Ghost and power. Listen, folks, there's not a saint on the earth that's lacking in power. Not a saint on the earth lacking in anointing. When you got saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost, he put everything in you you need. The problem is most folks is short-circuiting it, undeveloping it. Come on, somebody. Uh, for example, you walk across a uh, carpet and you touch something and you have static electricity. Well, I flew into Toronto the other day and I'm going to tell you lightning was flashing. Now, are you going to be static electricity or are you going to be a lightning bolt? The conduit of power, the conduit of God's power is mind, mouth, and heart. All three of them have to be hooked together. Else you will short circuit Huh? Amen. Deplete. Amen. If anybody leaves, please take your body. <laughs> and so we're made in God's image. When God looked over the brow of the earth, it was dark. You know what he said? He didn't say, ooh, dark out there. <laughs> what did he say? Light me. I'm going to preach somewhat on the mouth, turning things around. Well, I've heard that mouth business. Well, if you had any sense, you'd, you'd be ready to hear some more. I'm telling you, the power of God flows through your mouth. Have you ever noticed how much in church uh, there is in, in verbiage? We greet at the door, huh? We sing, we preach, we pray, all verbiage. Someone comes to y'all to get saved, they have to confess Jesus is Lord. At the end of the trail, on judgment day, every kneel, bow, every tongue. Everything has to do with speech. That's why they call us a guest speaker. One lady said, what kind of preacher are you? I said, I'm a good one. I believe everybody ought to be washed in the blood. I believe everybody ought to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Huh? Everybody ought to preach the word of faith message. Someone said, well, well just, you're just narrow-minded. Yeah, and saved. James chapter 3, have you found it? In verse 3, I'm just going to kind of uh, hit it a little bit. Uh, we're talking about, uh, uh, the, the Bible talks about the tongue is compared to a, a rudder in a sh on a ship, uh, a bit in a horse's mouth is compared to a spark on your tongue. See, most Christians don't believe uh, the Bible or they wouldn't say certain things when things are, when things are dry. You could not get Jesus to comment on problems. They brought him someone sick. He, he didn't say, my goodness, boy, you're the sickest dude in town. Huh? He wouldn't comment on the, on the situation. He wouldn't talk about the problem. David didn't say to the giant, boy, you are a big dude. He didn't say, boy, how many trees did it make, take to make your sphere? What did he say? You uncircumcised Philistine. See, folks, the word of God's got to come out of our mouth, but it's got to be connected to our mind, our mouth, and our heart. Else it becomes double-minded. Let me show you an example. In, Psalm, in, in Proverbs 27, about the third verse, or sixth verse, uh, you know the Bible said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, now, for example, let me paraphrase. If you're standing in your, in your picture window, you know, you look out in your front yard, and here pulls up somebody, you say, oh, dear Lord, what are they doing here? And they brought their three little monsters with them. <laughs> Honey, hide the jewelry. The hooligans are here. But then they knock on the door. You say, how y'all doing? We just talking about y'all. Come on in, have some sweet milk and cornbread. Now, which person are you? Are you the three little monster guy or the sweet milk and cornbread? You're the three little monster guy. 
because all that other was just for looks. It's window dressing. Hell, people, folks, listen. The world is going to hell chasing window dressing. Heroin and drugs and dope is window dressing. We have the real. We have the real. Come on. We have the real. Oh, that's a counterfeit. Oh, that's a counterfeit. As I've traveled over the years, I don't always get to work out, you know, and so sometimes I, I, I like to walk, and if I can't, the weather's bad, I walk in a Walmart. Y'all have Walmarts up here? And so, I find, so I'm walking down the aisle, you know, one time, I believe I was in Arkansas, that, that's, a, that's a foreign country, and I'm in Arkansas, and I'm just, I'm just praying in the Spirit, you know, and I got kind of carried away. You ever get carried away talking in? So I'm a, I'm a Rondine, Shondine, Fonda, you know. <laughs> I got a little loud, and I looked up, and the lady's on the ladder. And she said, can I help you? <laughs> she heard me talking and she said, you, you're not from here, are you? I said, no, ma'am, I'm from another planet. <laughs> she said, are you on something? I said, yes, ma'am, angel dust. Right. <laughs> We're cut from a different rag, folks. The DNA of God is inside of us. We are predestined, pre-planned for greatness. Something awesome is in you, and God wants to pull it out. I thought that was good. So I had a horse one time. You know, you know why I wear boots? I wear boots because Jesus, when he comes back, he's going to be riding a white horse. So we're going to go horseback riding together. I used to have a horse, and, uh, and uh, uh, I'd go out to the barn and get the bridle, you know, and I'd head towards the horse, and he, he'd take off running. <laughs> he knows. He's thinking get rode. He wasn't horsing around. <laughs> I was in Tennessee the other day, and I was preaching for a pastor, and he loves horses, and we was talking, and I told a little story. Can I tell a little story? Yeah. And uh, he liked to fell out the floor. Uh, I, at one time, I wanted a baby coat, a horse coat, a male Colt, and I had a real nice mare, and uh, I, exa I, I use this example. Uh, you know, I could pray, oh, God. I could get Pentecostal, oh, God. <laughs> I could uh, I call all my friends, oh, Lord, I want y'all to pray. Pray a hard prayer. Oh, I want a baby colt. Oh, I desire a baby colt. I go out in the barn and lay across the hay and just ball and squall. I could fast. Or else I could just load the mare up, take it to my neighbor's house, got a stallion, lead a few days, 11 months, 10 days, I'd have a baby, baby, baby colt and wouldn't even have to pray about it. <laughs> it's amazing how God has delegated authority to us and we're still wanting God to do it. The backbone of the word of faith message, you don't need Jesus back down here, brother. The word of faith in your mouth. If you'll speak it and believe it, get your head, your mouth, your heart hooked up, the power of God will flow through you in abundance. Give the Lord a hand clap if you believe that. Let's don't patty cake. Let's give him a good hand clap. And so, the power of the conduit, the power train, is your mind, your mouth, and your heart. It's like a, the engine, the transmission, and rear end of the car. You may have an excellent, excellent engine, and you can root and root and root and all you want to. But if you ain't got no transmission, you ain't going nowhere. Huh? Some folks I know got it in reverse. Uh, you ought to wear a bridle. Not from the old school, the Pentecostal school, you know, old school. And uh, I was raised under pews. My mom and daddy is pastors, you know. And... Uh, I believe I was six years old before I knew gum come in a pack. <laughs> but anyhow, my mama, my mama and daddy had, uh, had 13 kids. They're going to fill that church up one way or another. And, uh, but uh, we've lost some of that moving of the spirit. Now, it's okay to frolic. But that's that not real dancing. Brother, when the Spirit hits you to dance, it's like, it's like fire ants in your boots. You, just, you cannot dance gracefully in the Spirit. 
You just cut her up. Hmm? But the Pentecostal ladies of yesteryear, you know, they were, they were fluffy sisters. And uh, they used to wear girdles. And so at church, they all looked like this. But, uh, you know, when they got home, they, they let that flesh fly. They took that girdle off. But see, you and I should never take off our bridle. It takes discipline not to talk about the storm. Let me give you an example. If James is writing today, he would say your tongue is like the steering wheel in your car. Does your words actually steer you towards prosperity? Can your words steer you towards disease and lack? The Bible says so. Huh? Let's say you, uh, you, uh, you're driving a Ford, you know, good Ford, because on a, on a steel night you can hear a Chevrolet rust, but a good Ford. Nobody, nobody in here would be so naive that you would break open. Your, now, you're, you're driving down the road, but you're headed towards a ditch. Everybody say ditch. ditch. Say it again. Ditch. One more time. Ditch. You're headed towards a ditch. Now, you wouldn't get on your cell phone and say, uh, uh, give me Ford Motor Company. I want you to sit down with one of your supervisors. My car is headed towards a ditch. <laughs> well, they created it, didn't they? Did they not make that Ford? Hmm? Huh? Would you call Ford to come down here? And no, no. Did God create and make you? Yes. Then leave him alone. You put your hands on your own steering wheel. Now what people like to do is they like to talk ditch. Big ditch. Wide ditch. Muddy ditch. I think we ought to have a ditch party. Invite all of our ditch friends. Wear ditch clothing. People love to talk ditch. It takes discipline to take authority over your steering wheel and turn it. Now, now why is this? Why is it? We live in a temporary fallen, cursed earth. Our, our great great grandparents, by their high treason in the Garden of Eden, uh, Adam, through Adam and Eve's fall, Satan breathed into their, their, their flesh the inner propensity of sin. It's still in your flesh. Huh? Your flesh is no different from the sinner. Your flesh is no different from the sinner. You, God expects you to take your spirit man, and rise up and, and spank your flesh and make it mine. That's what real spiritual worship is. Anybody can come to church, I love the Lord, love the Lord, hallelujah. But how do you live? You fight like cats and dogs. <laughs> so Eve, through her, I mean, first of all, she ought not be flirting with the devil. You do know that men speak 10,000 words a day. Women speak about 30,000 with gust up to 50. <laughs> uh, oh, man. <laughs> A man, a man can talk on the phone about 10 minutes. You know, talking to mom and them. Well, I said, how they doing? Fine, fine. What she say? They're all good. A woman can talk 15 minutes and then talk about the phone call for an hour and a half. <laughs> I believe Eve, I believe Eve was the first housewife that ever ate their, her husband out of house and home. But I have a point. I have a point. The problem is Satan used the body of the serpent to talk to her. He could not come in there and kill them. He can't kill you. He can't stop you. I can prove it to you. If you're lost today and you want to get saved, you walk up here and get saved. All the devil in hell had to step back and watch you come get saved. All of them together can't stop you. All of them together can't stop you. All the hordes of hell cannot. If you ever make up your mind, you get this, this, and this going together, he can't stop it. Ephesians 3 said he, Satan comes in and he takes the corrupt communication. That way we give him place. If you give him place in your life, if he has place, it's because you gave it to him. 
So he started talking to him, got to looking. Huh? Listen to me carefully. They were so in the spirit, they didn't realize they had a physical body. Do you know most sin comes through the senses? That's the door. But Satan impregnated her with a thought that God was holding out. The first words out of his mouth was, has God really said? We call those white lies. Not really. She began to entertain that. Then she acted on it. From the mind to the mouth to the action. Satan pulled the same thing on Jesus. On the Mount of Temptation, he showed him all the kingdoms of the earth in a moment. Had to be in his mind. He replaced that thought with, it is written. I'm going to talk about being transformed, transfigured. Here's what God wants. Here's the deal. God wants what's inside you to come out and permeate the outside. Yeah. On the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus, in his inner circle, Peter, James, and John, transfigured and his face shone. Yeah, yeah but that was Jesus. <laughs> Do you know that Jesus, in his earthly ministry, never healed a Christian? They wasn't none. John 14, he said, these works that I do, shall you do, and greater. He done nothing by deity. See, the nature of fallen man is transferred through lineage through the seed of the man. Jesus didn't have no earthly daddy. He didn't have the nature, the fallen nature. Huh? Brother Dale... If he didn't have the fallen nature, then how was he tempted? Good question. He was tempted in all points. On the Mount of Temptation, he was actually tempted to commit suicide. The Bible says so. He was tempted to bow down and, and, and worship Satan and, and get out under the pressure. How was he tempted? If you'll, if you'll study, he, he, he was always tempted when he weakened himself. When he fasted 40 days. When he, when he went in and began to carry the care of the world. Come on, somebody. He did it on purpose to pass the test that the first Adam failed. And the second Adam, he got victory and turned around and gave it to us. Now you, through your faith, have victory on anything the devil can come up with. No man can tame your tomb. My wife can't exercise for me. I finally learned you can't lose weight by watching an exercise video. <laughs> I watched it over and over and over. Most Americans have treadmills. They hang clothes on them. <laughs> There's something in you called a treasure. Huh? But to harness that power... A flood has power. We have to dam it up. Electricity has power. We have to put it through wires. Water through a pipe. Power of God has to come through this conduit. There's so much power flowing into a building, you got to put a, a breaker box to slow it down. Huh? It's not that God's lacking, lacking in power. It's not that you're lacking in power. you got to get your act together. All three working together. Turn with me, if you would, please, to Psalms 12. Uh, Y'all get anything at all? Yes. Psalms chapter 12. Uh, over the years, I, I have learned to preach what God tells me. Huh? He told me first of all this year, uh, turn it around. If we'll start believing, you're going to start seeing a great transfer of wealth. From the sinners to the saints. You know what I say? Let her rip, tater chip. <laughs> I thought that was good. Psalm the 12th chapter. Psalm chapter 12. Now, folks, we don't give no money back. You don't like this, you don't get, you don't get no refunds. If I say, I love Brother Dale. 
see if you keep saying it, it'll, it'll come to pass. <laughs> you know, we get, we get hammered all the time. Oh, y'all that health and wealth bunch. Yes. <laughs> what, what part of that don't you like? <laughs> huh? I don't know how, how y'all do here, but in the States, we got some churches, you know, out, out in the country, you know, and they'll sing them old dumb songs, you know. Just build me a cabin next to mama. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> I just soon hear a donkey bray at a tin barn at midnight. <laughs> there ain't no cabins in heaven. Diamond doorknobs. Streets of gold, walls of jasper. And you want to talk about our heaven? If you don't hush that mess, we're going to put you in a trailer park in the back. <laughs> don't think that there ain't no trailer parks. Have you found Psalms 12? Psalm 12, look at 12 and verse 1, please. Psalm 12 and 1. Psalm 12 and 1. What's the first word? Nah, nah, it's, it's health. You ever, see, he's a present help. A present help. He said here, help, Lord, for the godly man ceases. That, that don't sound too good. The godly man going to run out of gas? He going to come to an end? What's up with that? He said, uh, 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 the godly man ceases, for the faithful for, shall fail. You know how many thousands of people I hear say, but Dale, I go to church, I, I pay my tithes, I'm faithful, but I'm rusted, busted, and disgusted. <laughs> Even though it's God's will. God's will. He had to take Abraham out and show him the stars to expand his mind. Huh? Yeah. Now you do know that Sarah tried to help him. Yeah. Yeah. Abe, it might be that God wants to use our handmaiden. So you go and have sex with her. He said, okay. <laughs> you can create problems that don't go away. Yeah. We're still dealing with that today in the Middle East. He said, help, Lord, uh, they speak vanity. God, even though it's God's will favor to have a son, he had to change his mind and get in his mouth. Huh? There's two of the, of the conduit. Huh? Mind and mouth. Mind and mouth. Now, see, here we are. The greatest thing God ever did for you, the greatest thing God ever did for you is put his nature in your spirit. You're not in the same person you used to be. Amen. If you'll change your talking and your thinking, you can change after you're born again. Amen. What? <laughs> God, God still wants me to change? James 1 says, you, we miss it in all things. We miss it in a lot of things. We offend a lot of things. But if you don't offend or miss it in your mouth or word, you're mature. I can listen to you talk and tell you about what level you're on. You ought to hear some folks talk. I don't have that Alzheimer's. I got that sometimes. <laughs> How you doing? About to have a meltdown? Well, don't stand close to me. <laughs> Brother Dale, I, I'm fat and ugly and broke. Well, you might be. <laughs> That's the ditch. Yeah. How you going to turn it? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Come on, somebody. You can say, God gives me beauty for ashes. Amen. It's, not that, it's not that people don't have flaws. Amen. It's not that people don't have imperfections. Huh? But see, if you magnify those, talk about those, they'll dominate you. But if you'll say, oh, I tell you, the greater one entails me. I can do all things through Christ. God be for me. Who can be against me? Come on, somebody. Amen. You fill your heart up with your mouth. As sure as you go to the petrol station, take out the nozzle, put it in your tank, fill up your tank with gas, you fill up your, your heart with your mouth. Huh? See, you're full of something. I, I can listen to you talk and tell you what you're full of. 
Huh, come on, somebody. He said, uh, he said uh, speak vanity in one of his neighbors with flattering lips. With a, uh, a double heart. Everybody say double heart. Double heart. Double. Now, where have I heard that? Could that be James, double-minded, double heart, mouth talking one thing, heart thinking another, mind drifting off? Jesus stood at the, the mountain there and spoke to the mountain, told it to be removed. Spoke to the fig tree, cursed it, and it died. Then he turned to the disciples and said, Now, boys, don't y'all try this. It'll blow your lips off. <laughs> no. He said, Whosoever. Let me tell you who believes in believing and saying. Who believes in believing and saying? God the Father believes in believing and saying. He found Gideon hiding, hiding like a coward. He said, mighty man of courage. See, all your life's fan, you got to bear in mind, turning, 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 turning. James 3 says the entire world of iniquity depends on the kindling wood off your tongue. Before Satan can do anything, he got to give you a thought, get you to act on it, get you to speak it. Come on, somebody. Get that kindling wood going. Now, folks, it's pouring down rain. You know, a little spark don't hurt much. But, brother, when it's dry and powdery, a spark can do a bunch of damage. At the right time, you better hold your tongue. Many of God's people need a checkup from the neck up. You hear them saying, the longer I thought about it, the madder I got. Well, quit thinking. <laughs> he said, uh, verse 4, verse 4, who has said, with our tongue we shall prevail, our lips are own. Ain't no preacher going to tell me how to talk. Huh? Ain't no preacher going to tell me what I can say, what I can't say. You'd be surprised how many people, and I can help you bunches, just bunches. You want to help you? Yes. Study before you answer. Just stop and think. Have you ever seen anything you wish you could kind of <laughs> suck it back? <laughs> Once the bullet has left the chamber, as soon as Jesus said, take no thought saying. Once you say it, you own it. I was preaching on sarcasm. You know what sarcasm is? It brings my mind to my mother-in-law. You know, sarcasm. That's, you know, that's mixed emotion. Mixed emotions is when your mother-in-law drives your new car off a cliff. <laughs> and so I, I, I was uh, preaching on sarcasm. Sarcasm is the truth with a bite to it. See, Satan is a master. See, he, he, all he's ever done is counterfeit the real. That's all he can do. Huh? But see, now he believes in believing and saying. Isaiah 14, I will say in my heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my soul. See, he believes in it. Where do you think he got it? He saw God do it. He tried to coffee it. That's all he does is coffee. That's all he can do. So, you know, I speak on sarcasm, but you have to break yourself. Don't look at me so holy. Tighten down your halo and hang on. You have to break yourself. You have to retrain the brain. So, uh, you know, I, I, I had the revival and went home and had to make a, uh, make a deposit. I love doing that. And the lady, the teller, you know, she talked through her nose. She said, thank you. Well, you know, it's cool and witty as I am. I said, thank you. And the moment I said it, see, sarcasm has a, has a bite to it. Uh, Michaela, David's wife saw him dance. What'd she say? Didn't the king act kingly today? What she said was true. Huh? But it had a bite to it. Huh? Uh, look at her all pretty up. Our language is full of it. Now watch this. See, over here, when we're praying for the sick, we want our words to be powerful. But over here in the beauty shop or barber shop, chit chatting. Telling jokes and you know and stuff. Stuff you ought not be talking about. 
But then in the church, you want to get real spiritual. Hyundai, Shonda, and Rhonda. <laughs> See, you can talk in tongues all day, but if your heart's not right, you become a sounding brass. Why? They're disconnected. So, so sarcasm, they, they, they did to Jesus. They said, hail master, king of the Jews. But they didn't mean that. Satan is crafty at taking the word and twisting it, taking the power out of it. He tried it on Jesus. Now, isn't this ironic? Jesus, the word, and Satan quoting it to him. For it is written, cast yourself down. Angel will bear you up. But he added three words. It's not in the 91st Psalm. At any time. If you fall off a building by accident, angels will fluff you up. You jump off to prove you're spiritual, we'll scrape you off the sidewalk. Different intention of the heart. God looks at the heart. Trying to hurry. He, uh, uh, he, he said here, uh, uh, let, me, let me finish it. He said, our lips are our own, who will serve fail, who's Lord over us. Jesus, to be completely Lord over you, needs to be Lord over your mouth. I, I don't like good today. I can't smoke, I can't chew, I can't cuss, I can't fornicate, no, I can't even talk. <laughs> no, you do whatever you want to. But if you won't walk in thunder, lightning, power. Moving right along. Let's go real quickly to Proverbs, Proverbs 18. This will be my first final closing. Don't be concerned, I have 17. <laughs> Proverbs, Proverbs 18. As you're going to Proverbs 18, 20, I'm going to quote you another scripture. Um, Proverbs, you go to Proverbs 18, 20, I'm going to quote you uh, Proverbs 12 and 6. It says, the mouth... Of the, uh, of the just shall be delivered, shall deliver them. The mouth of the just. Everybody say, my mouth. Amen. How does God deliver you? Your mouth. Did that work at the walls of Jericho? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Did it work for Daniel when he prayed and shut the lion's mouth? Absolutely. If you'll read your Bible all through history, God delivered people with their mouths. Amen. Huh? Send Judah first, praising mouth. When everything looks wrong and the storm is raging, holler, peace, peace, peace be still. Oh, y'all just name it and claim it. Well, I do a name it and claim it, just doubt it and do without it. Hey, found Proverbs 18, please. Look at verse 20, please. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. You're going to wind up eating what you hear your mouth say. What your mouth produces, fruit is produce. Huh? It's called the circle of faith. You're going to always wind up believing what you hear yourself say. Now, now don't, don't, don't leave me, but I'm going to share something with you. In your life, everybody say my life. My say it again. My One more time. My In your life, your words are more powerful than God's. How can that be? Because you're going to believe what you hear yourself say. I have worked altars for years. I've been in preaching in penitentiary. I've had men say, I just can't believe God will forgive me. I just can't believe I just can't believe it. Well, you, if you don't believe it, you can't receive it. God's already forgiven them. Huh? But if, if they say, I don't believe he can, I can't, I won't, I can't, then their own mouth stops them. Oh, but if you'll repent... What does repent mean? Change your mind. If you look back over your life, you're not even the same person you used to be. See, now when I was in high school, <laughs> I, was a, I was a goat roper. Y'all know what a goat roper is? Y'all don't get out much, do you? Goat roper is, 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 is people who are raised poor that couldn't afford a horse. So we rope goats. <laughs> And we, we wore Levi's, you know, the fly button up came with so much iron starch they could walk to the school by themselves. <laughs> but, you know, you know, you learn this, if you, if you keep clothes long enough, they'll come back in style. 
And so, uh, and then, then these sissy virtues started showing up. These bell bottoms. Ain't gonna wear no sissy virtues. Well, about, about four or five months, I began to wear bell bottoms. You know why? Because the sissies liked them. The girls liked them. It's amazing what you can change. Proverbs 18, verse 20. Man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase, if I say increase, increase starts in your mouth. It is a proven fact that most people that win the lotto get a large inheritance. If they don't change their character, they wind up broke. Why? They can't handle it. We want the inside to change our outside. The same word that you use transfigured is the same word transformed. We're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Now, he said here, uh, the increase of the lips shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That actually means choice of the tongue. The choice. What your tongue chooses to talk. Now watch it. He said, they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. You're going to be filled with what you love to talk about. Sadly, most people is themselves. So they full of themselves. I, I thought it was good. You talk to poor people and they will brag how poor they are. Huh? You talk to sick people, you know what they say? Been sick all year, had the flu seven times, three operations, you don't see my scar. No, just soon not, just soon not. They'll show you their ventilator, all their medication. They can pronounce words, cyphrodifliferate. <laughs> but, they, but, they, but you quote some gospel in the Hebrew, uh, the Greek. Oh, we, we don't quote Greek. You can say difliferate. <laughs> Why was Jesus so successful? Well, duh, he was the son of God. No, 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 no. He was, but he never did anything as the son of God. He said, these works are you doing greater. Now, don't leave here saying, well, they think they can outdo Jesus. He said this, John 14. You'll be show you a greater work, the new birth. Back in the Holy Ghost. He turned that over to the body of Christ to do that. Huh? He turned us over to the greater work. Come on, somebody. Now, he didn't do anything as deity. He didn't anoint him with the Holy Ghost. If he did it as deity, he wouldn't need God to anoint him. That gives us great possibilities because we got the same Holy Ghost. But here's the secret. He didn't say anything unless his father said it. He said, I just believe that Jesus could heal people anytime he got good and ready. There you go, thinking all by yourself again. <laughs> he said he couldn't. Jesus said, of myself, I can do nothing. They got angry with him at the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5. And... Uh, it's amazing how hypocritical uh, uh, churchgoers are, way down south. <laughs> and uh, they said, uh, you're healing on the wrong day. Wrong day, wrong day. You know how you can stop that? What day do y'all heal? Because they didn't. But he tried to explain to them, he said, you don't understand. When my father works, that's when I work. When he manifests, that's when I manifest. Could he have waited until Tuesday? No, no. God moves, get in it. I have learned there's, there's, there's much more power in a right now spontaneity spoken word, a rhema word. We just left a city in Alice, Oklahoma, and this lady there, about the third or fourth night in a wheelchair, had her, her spine severed. Couldn't walk, hit by a semi-truck, and had her spine severed. And so we, we was ministering, preaching, and then we prayed for her, and I heard the Lord say, Tell her to do what I tell her. Now, see, if we're not careful, she's in a wheelchair, you know, we'll get some ushers and we'll try to help her up, you know. No, 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 don't get over in the flesh. 
Just do what God says. Don't pull, don't jerk. So I said, uh, uh, the Lord said, just do whatever the Lord tells you. And so I walked off, started praying for other people. About three minutes, the Lord spoke to her, get up. She stood up and was healed. See, the power is in the lightning bolt coming down through your spirit. Anybody interested in that? Anybody interested in that? My second final closing. As you get older, your wife turns into your mama. They do. They do. When the kids are gone, the nest is empty. She'll say, honey, time to come in the house. (laughs) You need to take a bath before you go to bed. But if you'll notice, if you'll notice, you ever notice people who've been married a long time? The husband can start a sentence, wife can finish it. They're on the same track. It's called intimacy. He wants us to think his thoughts. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts I'm thinking towards you, not evil, but a peace to give you results, to give you an expected end. Huh? We ought to think like him, talk like him, believe like him. You know how intimate that is to take inside you a thought from God, let it come out and dominate your outside? You talk about Honeymoon City, that's as intimate as it gets. We're supposed to think like him and talk like him and act like him. Who do you think the world acts like? Their daddy. Thieving, lying, cussing, fussing. Huh? You ever notice that the Bible equates full of the Holy Ghost like being drunk? When a person is inebriated, his inner ambitions come out. Little old me, guy. I'll whoop anybody in here. Whoop them, whoop them all, whoop them all. <laughs> Only way you're going to hurt me is your bad breath, dude. Get back. <laughs> I believe we miss it oftentimes by looking for some natural phenomenon. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah. I've seen people that thought they were spiritual. Not magical, not mystical. I've seen people get healed and it wasn't all that big a deal. (laughs) Just zip. Okay. I've seen people people get saved. I mean, really get her too, brother. And they were showing no emotions. And I've seen people bawl and squall and sling snot and not get nothing. I mean, get nothing. I just don't like your preaching. Blame him. He let me come. (laughs) What should we do? Study before we answer. I'm closing. Me and my wife, we have a couple of little signals. And uh, Thessalonians 4.11 says, study to be quiet, mind your own business, work your own hands, you'll have no lack. Pretty good scripture. So when she gets off of talking about something, I'll go, 4.11, 4.11. (laughs) (laughs) It works better if I'm sitting way on the other side of the car. I have a fool's list. I won't read it here. I'm smarter than that. (laughs) One of the things a fool does is always meddling, always uttering his mind. Ecclesiastes 5 says, man is on the earth, God is in heaven, make your words few. 
Proverbs said, the multitude of words, there's no lack of sin. Boy, you talk, invariably you're going to get off on talking about something you ought not talk about. Hmm? You mean you want me to wear a bridle? I don't. He does. Jesus said, I only speak what I hear my father say. Now, I'm sure everybody will leave here tonight and cut out at least 95% of all they're talking. No, it takes discipline. It takes honor and respect, respect and training. Amen. Amen. Did y'all get anything today? Did y'all get anything today? Give the Lord a hand clap of praise, would you please?